This is the absolute best Omega ever built. And this here is the legendary Orlex Submariner. This Omega Seamaster Diver 300M is available at 6,300 euro on a steel bracelet. The Rolex Submariner will set you back $10,100 at its most basic configuration. So for today's video, let's compare these two watches at their seven most important features and once and for all answer the questions which the better one of the two is. So let's get started. Let's start with something a bit unusual for my videos, the Vauxhall packaging. I mean, when you already spend so much money on something like that, ideally you would also get a nice packaging, right? Um, so let's have a look at Omega's packaging. We have this covering box first, which feels solid already and all the warranty paper bits are in an extra place. The box itself is made from light lacquered wood. Not only looks luxurious, but also feels like it. Um, kind of like a piano, I would say. Uh, on the inside, we find cream colored leather or faux leather. I'm actually not quite sure. Um, and the watch sits nicely on top of its own little pillow. Those metal hinges on the inside are a nice design feature too. All in all, I can say that this really is a high-end box in terms of watch boxes within this price range. And you know, you usually end up with a lot less than this. Alrighty, let's see what a Rolex has to offer here. The covering box here has a soft cream color and is also well made. Uh, the actual box is in this classic and you know, well-known Rolex green. Uh, with the iconic wave design on top. Though this box is really well made, I have to say that it is missing the luxurious feel you have with the one from Omega. The Rolex box looks a bit outdated, which makes sense because there really has not been any updates in way too long uh, when it comes to its design. I assume the material is also some kind of faux leather, but I'm not sure. Uh, and so when you open it, you will find a soft inlay in a matching cream color. Uh, the watch itself sits on this claspy-like pillow, which is really handy because no matter how short or long you have your bracelet, it will always just, you know, adjust to it. The bottom line is Rolex boxes are very well made and solid, but that's about it. Omega is definitely miles ahead here and on another level when it comes to the box feel and you know the user experience so yeah point for omega here by the way are you interested in irresistible luxury watch offers well then make sure to check out my friend and watch dealer max rufus at rufuswatches.com every saturday he drops a new set of amazing watch offers from brands like rolex patek omega and many others and always for superb prices my husband Kai and I, we have bought several watches from him and he also buys watches from you if you want to trade in for something, you know, new and shiny. So you can now click here to visit his website and have a look at his current offers and to Max a big thank you for supporting and sponsoring the Genial channel. Okay, let's continue with the finishing of the case and the bracelet. And we are going with Omega first. Even at first sight, you can easily tell that this watch is well made. The bezel inlay is made from ceramic, entirely scratch resistant and unilateral twistable, which also feels very satisfying to do so. That's important. Nothing jams and you can enjoy the 120 clicks unhindered. The crystal itself is made from sapphire and has no magnifying lens on the date. The case on this Omega is alternatively brushed or polished with the Omega typical case shape. On the back, you will find an exhibition case bag made from Sapphire 2, through which you can look at the movement, but we will get to that in a bit. The stainless steel bracelet is really well made. Though the clasp is arguably a bit on the chunky side and rather massive, it closes and opens nicely and more importantly, securely, and also offers a form of quick adjustment. You can also get a latex strap with it, which is nice during summer that comes with a regular ping buckle. Uh, the case has a water resistance of up to 300 meters, so diving and swimming is not a problem with this. So overall, a watch for everyday use. So what about the Rolex? Same as the Seamaster, you can also tell it's high quality within the first few looks and seconds. The bezel inlay is also made from ceramic, unilateral twistable, but with a slightly nicer click action, uh, giving you 120 of some of the nicest click sounds with an extra smooth feeling. The crystal is made from sapphire with the Rolex famous magnifying lens on top, which makes the date more legible. The case is finely brushed on top and has its sides entirely polished. The bracelet itself is brushed entirely with its three links and the classic oyster clasp. With a safety clasp included, the clasp is stunningly well made. So no surprise here that it is known to be, you know, one of the best clasps in the watch world. 
Uh, it also is equipped with a glide lock system and a two centimeter quick adjustment option. Uh, since this is also a dive watch with a water resistance of 300 meter, it is suitable for diving and swimming, of course, so, you know, ideal for every day. All in all, we can see and say that both watches are amazingly well finished, so announcing a winner is pretty tricky here, but I would still give this one to Rolex, who is marginally ahead here since the clasp and bracelet are slightly more handy compared to the Omega. Right, let's continue with overall proportions and how it wears, perhaps one of the most important features we are going to compare in this video. So this Omega has a diameter of 42 millimeter, a lug to lug of 48.5 and a height of 30.8. Though 42 really is not small at all, this watch still wears pretty well and balanced thanks to its lug to lug of 48.5. So slimmer wrists uh, starting at 165 millimeter and maybe slightly below are still able to pull this off, I would say. The weight is also comfortable to wear, which goes for both the steel bracelet and the latex strap version, which both feel very nice. The dial itself is rather large, so you won't necessarily need your glasses out to tell the time here either. With its height of 30.8, it is relatively you know, thick, but you won't notice it too much when wearing it since the you know, sloping lugs make the case fit to your wrist better um, you know, visually. So all in all, a perfect daily watch. The Submariner here is slightly smaller uh, in all regards compared to the Seamaster. The diameter here is a 40 millimeter with a height of 12.7 and a lug to lug of 47 millimeter. Uh, the latest Submariner model has a slightly increased diameter uh, and a lug to lug which also is increased about half a millimeter but the height remains the same. In terms of weight, the Rolex wear is also heavy in a nice and high quality type of way. Uh, for many, the Oyster bracelet is the most perfect bracelet all around. And those who have worn this watch will immediately know why, because it feels just so smooth and comfy on the wrist. The dial is also large and legible, so no bad surprises here. What stands out in a good way here is the missing millimeter when it comes to the height of the watch. So it wears a smidge slimmer than the Omega. So overall, both watches feel and wear extremely comfortable, but thanks to the bit more compact measurements, I would give this point to Rolex again because the proportions just work a bit better. Alrighty, next we're going to look at the details on the dial and the overall finishing quality on a macro level. And I mean, all I can say here is wow. At this price point, Omega serves as nothing but perfection in terms of quality, but the highlight here is the dial and its details. The dial itself is made from highly polished ceramic which gives it this beautiful shine like almost like a mirror depending on the light uh, incidence it also has this very beautiful wavy pattern which is done by laser the highlight here has to be the hour markers and the hands themselves uh i mean what else can i say they are perfect uh, totally looks like this footage was created by ai uh, it's crazy uh, same goes for the font of course and the date down here at six o'clock when it comes to finishing, the Rolex is also practically perfect. Uh, it has a lacquer dial with the iconic font that is easily legible. Same goes for the hour markers. The highlight here are the white gold borders which frame the hour markers, uh, paired with this slightly you know, grainy texture of the looms within them. And if we look at the hands, we also see the very high level of finishing and the depth of detail here. Uh, the date on the Submariner sits at three o'clock instead of six, and thanks to the magnifying lens on the crystal and the sharp printing, it is super easy to read. So overall, it is a tough decision, but in this case, the point definitely goes to Omega because of the level of finishing and detailing here. Right, let's talk about the heart of the watch, the movement. Built into the Seamaster is Omega's in-house movement, the coaxial caliber 8800, which you can see through the exhibition case bag. It is known to be one of the best movements on the market with a generous power reserve of 55 hours. And there's something that makes this movement extra special. It is not only chronometer certified, but also meta certified. Uh, that means that each and every single movement is tested to an accuracy of uh, zero to five seconds per day. So even more accurate than the minus four to plus four seconds per day on chronometer testing. On top, the movement is also highly anti-magnetic uh, because of the components used. So it is resistant up to 15,000 Gauss, which is about the same you know, as your standard MRI machine. Rolex has built in their in-house caliber 3235, which has been in use since 20 and 20 up to you know, today. So now we have a 72 hour power reserve. Uh, Rolex is testing also every movement to COSC standards as well as their own, which are set to an accuracy of minus two to plus two seconds per day, which is also why they put superlative chronometer official certified on their watches. So 
in terms of accuracy, Rolex is very close to Omega here, but I say almost. Because according to their testing, it is not losing any time, but merely gaining it. Therefore, with an Omega, your worst case is being too early to a meeting or appointment. But with a Rolex, you know, the worst case might be that you're a teeny bit late in that case. But let's get back to it again. Both watches are basically as precise as mechanical watches can be. Even after 30 days, uh, both watches are usually still accurate to a minute or, you know, mostly only seconds even. The movement that the Submariner uses is not specifically anti-magnetic, which means that in theory you are getting a bit too close to magnet that it can happen that your watch becomes less accurate. But good thing is though that this can be easily fixed within, you know, a minute by a professional watchmaker since they have the tools to demagnetize the movement. Rolex has the longer power reserve, but Omega scores double when it comes to anti-magnetism and, you know, you got the metal certification. So therefore, in this category, I give the point to Omega. Oh, and now it gets hot. Uh, what about the availability? Ooh that overarching question. Uh, when it comes to Omega, availability is not really an issue. You'll be able to buy the watches at your Omega AD with either you know, a short or no waiting time. And if there is currently not the specific one you want, um, the gray market has got you covered. So oftentimes we're even less than retail. So there are no so-called you know, wait lists or anything like that with Omega. It is a bit different with Rolex though, even on the secondary market or gray market, um, even pre-owned watches are mostly more expensive compared to their retail price, which means that for someone who wants a Submariner right now, um, they have to pay a bit more or hop onto the you know, wait list, which is a can of worms I'm not going to open right now. Um, but good news is that things have cooled down in that regard. So with a bit of patience, you should be able to get your Submariner in reasonable time at retail or you know on the secondary market. The point here still goes to Omega since you have you know, more or less immediate availability or even prices below retail if you go you know to a secondary market or sometimes even if you ask very nicely at your Omega ID. When it comes to value retention, things are looking pretty sweet when it comes to the Omega Seamaster Diver 300M. Uh, it is being sold below retail on the secondary market, but that's ideal if you bought it there in the first place. So you know, there really is not anything um, burnt in case of uh, money should you change your mind. Plus, you know, want to sell it. The watch is still super popular, so you don't have to wait forever to find a buyer for it too, which is nice. Uh, if you buy at retail, you would have to expect a loss of about, I'd say like, 20 to 30 percent when selling it again if you bought pre-owned and want to sell it you know like super fast you would have to expect that about 10 percent in that case things are looking different with the rolex submariner here if you want to buy a submariner at retail and things are staying the way they are right now you can you know wear that watch and still be able to sell it for say like a thousand or two thousand more uh, if you buy one pre-owned it is similar to the omega situation the watch is still very popular and is relatively easy to sell so you have to expect something at around like a 10 percent loss in that case depending on how fast you want to sell it but as i mentioned uh, finding a buyer is not difficult here uh, so the point here goes to rolex uh, because thanks to the waitlist uh, effect the value retention looks a bit better compared to the omega so now that we have everything covered, we arrive at a full to three points for the Omega Seamaster Diver 300M. Try to be as objective as possible, which makes Omega the winner in this, even though it is considerably less expensive than the Submariner. But wait, it is still common knowledge in the watch world that the Submariner is bought and worn uh, so much more often. But why is that exactly? I mean, things are mostly due to Rolex's friend popularity and awareness with people, but you know, that's hard to score. So in short, if you want to buy a Rolex Submariner, I can list you reasons for the Omega all day long without ever being able to change your mind here. You would still buy the Rolex and, you know, vice versa. But if you have been going, you know, back and forth between two or more, um, this video might have finally answered your questions. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed this, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to watch more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And then I will see you in my next video. Until then, bye.